morning, good 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 morning. Oh. I think I'll have to go the fast way today. Oh. I've been doing so much lately. I had a, we had a new uh, suction pump fitted yesterday from Durr through Davis and uh, so for the first time I've got a suction pump that's got an amalgam filter on it. Before we used to have an amalgam settling tank, you know, and so uh, on this Durr, Durr thing it's got like a little cup underneath and the amalgam goes in there. I presume it settles there from like gold, it's like panning for gold dust, it's just heavier so it just sinks down. But uh, what they say is that you, you get a lid on the cup that clicks on and then you send it off to uh, your waste disposal people. Look at this thing, you see this encampment on the left, right? They've been there, right, it's May now, they've been there since December, so the six months they've been working on this place. So, and if you look on the right hand side, obviously I'll put this over to the right a bit. You see all that, what's going on there? Massive great substation, which could be a nuclear bunker for all I know. I do not know what they've been building there. Anyway, it's taken them six months. Well, hopefully they'll be finished soon. They're literally putting a tiny little stub road in there so that you can you can pull in. So anyway, that's beside the point. What? So yeah, anyway, I'm on this thing called FreeCycle, where you uh, FreeCycle.org, where if you've got something and you don't want it, and you think it's too good to go into landfill then uh, you just put it on free cycle and a bunch of people ring you up and say yeah I'll, I'll, I'll have that you know and they come over and pick it up and it's a bit of a weird thing it's a you think I mean I've made it sound very simple it's actually a bit more work than I'm making it sound because what happens is you get loads of you get like like we got this fantastic suck down machine for doing bike guards and stuff and I mean it's revolutionary it literally we went to the dental exhibition in uh, Excel and saw this thing working and we were sold on it straight away you just literally put a disc of thermo forming plastic in in a, like a little contact lens holder and uh, put your plaster cast on the base and press a button and uh, off it goes and next now you you can you know you think well that's great for whitening trays and stuff like that and possibly mouth guards, uh, orthodontic retention etc etc. But I um, mean they're just so much more than that. They've got like about 20, 30 plastics, and some of them are really thick. I mean some of them like a four millimeters thick. So uh, for example, so you can do special trays for example, and I don't know how you do your special trays. I mean, obviously you, you, um, you order them from the technician, don't you? You do, yes. <laughs> but we don't anymore because our dental technician is now retired. So, and anyway, I've always done special tray. I don't mind put casting up a plaster cast and pouring up uh, doing a special tray. In fact, I quite enjoy it. I quite like mucking about with the stuff. So we started off with the uh, self-curing acrylic, the uh, polymethone with acrylate, which is uh, nice, I like it, you know. Apart from the back, you get a bit high on the smell. It's quite easy to work with. It's, uh, you know, there's allergy uh, problems and you should really wear gloves while you're using it and stuff like that. But you've got a really nice special tray that you can, you know, two, two layers of wax pop down on the model you don't have to be too careful about the um, you know making it fit you have to then uh, put a bit of Vaseline on the top of the wax otherwise the when the acrylic when the acrylate heats up you'll find that the wax will get melted onto the inside of the special tray and that's a pain because then you have to boil a kettle 
and, and pour it inside the special tray and then that gets the wax out of the special tray but that just melts it and puts it down your plug hole where it just sets down the plug and bungs up your waste trap. <coughs> so a bit of Vaseline, one, this weird, weird, this one old weird trick for making special trays. And then we found that the uh, tech next, next door, he doesn't bother with mixing uh, acrylic or anything. He's, uh, he uses these light cured purple bits of horrible material. Don't know what it is, composite. The greasy stuff, greasy, horrible greasy stuff that leaves a grease all over your fingers when you use it. And uh, so again, two layers of wax, bit of Vaseline, purple tray over the top, uh, stick it under a light. We, we just use this, the handhold inspection light. We've got one of those ones that, you know, you use in the garage where you, it's on, it's on like an A-frame, small A-frame where you can just have it on the floor pointing up. Whereas uh, we, we have it on the A-frame pointing down. So it's about uh, four inches, about 10 centimeters above the workbench. And we put this thing underneath and then, but the trouble is you then have to go, you have to forget it because um, it takes, it's not very sensitive. It's not like, like your composite, which is set straight away. It literally, I mean, we had some stuff out on the bench for, for I don't know, two, three weeks and it still hadn't set. So it has to be set. So, but if you want to set it quickly, you need an ultraviolet light. And so you need something like one of those lights where they use for curing uh, fingernail, you know, uh, acry acrylic fingernail varnish. Um, and then you stick it in there. But I had this light, it doubles as a light when I need some really, really intense, in fact it's too bright really for the lighting that I need, but anyway. So FreeCycle is great, so you get 12 replies and then you get the, the you know, can I have this? And then, so if you post four things, you'll get one account will reply to all four saying, yeah, can, can I have this? Now, honestly, you have to decide how you feel about that. I mean, just people just, you know, you're putting stuff up and um, and someone is just replying to everything. They probably spend all day on it. Just as soon as the post comes up, yeah, can I have this? Yeah, can I have this? And they're coming around and getting stuff. And I don't know what they're doing with it. Perhaps they're storing it. Perhaps they're putting it into landfill. Perhaps they're using it, perhaps they're selling it on the boot fairs or they own a charity shop, I don't care, but I tend to shy away from the people who want something, doesn't matter what it is. Because, and I'll give you an example, I had an old Marshall amp, it's given to me by my son-in-law, so no use to me, I don't play guitar. So Marshall amp, now what do you do? I mean, basically the decision is, does it go in the normal bin or does it go in the electrical bin, you know? That's the thing, but then, but that's heresy with a Marshall amp. So I put it on eBay and said, you know, not on eBay, on, on uh, FreeCycle, and said, if anybody wants this, here it is, here's a picture of it. This is the model, blah, blah, blah. And this bloke said, yeah, he said, I, I restore uh, Marshall amps and uh, old amps, and I'm interested in them, and uh, I'll make sure it goes to a good home. And that's really what you want to hear, you know, if somebody says, uh, the best way to reply to any post on FreeCycle is to, yeah, that is, will be a, a real use to me. And, uh, you know, if I don't use it all, I'll make sure it goes to a, a good home, you know? So um, anyway, this bloke couldn't come around and pick it up. So I dropped it in because he lives just around the corner from where I work. And uh, I said, I knocked on his door, I said, here it is. And, and he's like, well, he says, quite frankly, he said, I'm gonna make sure I'm giving this away for nothing. You know, because, uh, he, he wouldn't um, he wouldn't give away a martial amp he said this is going to go in my home studio well I mean that's great as far as I'm concerned I've given it to someone who understands what a martial amp is who attaches some value to it and he's going to make some use of it you know whereas someone who just said oh that's a martial amp I'll have a quick look on eBay yeah I could probably vlog that 50 quid um, what are you going to do you know, I mean, 
again, it's still, that's part, but then you can't protest about that. That's part of the ethos of free cycle. You have to let it go. You have to let it go. If you're going to, you know, you can't, uh, I did uh, once put a, a photocopier and it was a big old, so it used to belong to the GDPA, it's not worth anything. And uh, but um, and, it, and, it, and it needed servicing by Xerox. And it was about uh, 15 years old, you know, so it's not really... But it did stapling and it did collating and it did, you know, I mean, it, it was a big office photocopier. So I put it on and then I had loads of people say, yeah, I'll have that, I'll have that, I'll have that. And then, and then I thought, no, I'm not going to give that away. It's obviously valuable. I'm not going to give it away. It's worth keeping. It's useful. It might come in useful for me later if I set up an office and need a photocopy. So I said that it had been taken when it hadn't been taken. It's the only time I've done it. And then eventually, after having it in the garage for another couple of years, I'm like, no, just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. Buena fortuna. Go with God with my photocopy, as far as I'm concerned. So, but you get all sorts of people. Uh, there, some people have got the idea that if they give you a sob story, that you're more likely to give it. So, you know, they're sort of, oh yeah, my wife has just died, or my son's just getting into computer games. I'm sure he'd love a Sinclair Zenix 81, whatever. And there, there, I do tend to avoid them. And uh, then you get other people who say, yeah, I'll come and pick it up. Because you can't, you can't say to ten people like, yeah, first come, first serve. You get here first, that's fine. <coughs> you have to at least say, come as soon as you come when you like, but give me a ring beforehand just to make sure it hasn't gone. But <coughs> what you do is you tend to pick someone who seems to be keen and say, come over, and then they they say, oh, I can't come, I can't come the day I said I could come. Uh, because my wife's told me I've got I haven't got the car that day and she needs it for work or and then you arrange another day and then they say oh I've just remembered um, I've got to pick my daughter up from school at six o'clock that that evening so can we make it seven and it'll be plus or minus ten minutes you know so there's a certain amount of uh, aggravation involved. And then you get people who say they're going to pick stuff up and then they just don't ever come and pick it up. They just, you never hear from them. They're just trolling, you know. They just say, oh yeah, I'll come and get that. And then they just... And the trouble is, it's not it's not really very fair because you have to give them... You tend to give them your name and your phone number and your address. Uh, whereas you've got nothing. They're pseudonymous. They, they're hiding behind a username. And so if somebody does muck you about, you can't really... You know, I suppose you could do some recourse but through the site. But it's all run by volunteers. So, um, so again, kudos. I mean, if you want to be taken seriously, put your name and your phone number in your request. Now, somebody posted um, a bunch of Kent peg tiles, which if you don't live in Kent, you probably won't know. But these are the uh, old-fashioned tiles where they're fastened on the roof by a wooden peg through a hole in the tile. And they are increasingly rare because uh, they're, they're not really made anymore. And um, and so now, if you need Kempec tiles, then you have to reuse the ones off the roof and try not to break them. And also, uh, you know, perhaps if a building is re-roofed with a more modern uh, style, then you um, you might have to. Uh, use reclaimed tiles, you know, and these tiles are, I mean, they're coming in, you know, a few pound a tile. So, anyway, she said she got some Kempeg tiles, and because my roof's a Kempeg tile roof, I thought, well, I can't harm to, I mean, these things, I can store them outside on a pallet, and unless somebody nicks them, they're going to be there for the next hundred years, aren't they? So, I thought I'd pop around there and pick them up. So, last night, Six o'clock after work, but in a full day at work, and then I'm, I'm hodding tiles around in a in a wheelbarrow. And this morning, have to un unload them from the wheelbarrow. And, oh dear! So that's why I'm a bit 
exhausted. Anyway, it's the coronation over the weekend. In line with all the uh, coronations, it's going to be raining steroids and cats and dogs. So, where's a hello? AE15 XWO. He's late for the hospital, isn't he? So, uh, yeah, so I'm not a big royalist. I think uh, the, ro the royalty is such an anti meritocratic institution that I think that uh, they, they have a pernicious effect on society. I've, God knows how many dentists I've seen who, who should be criticising the government and standing up for the profession and who haven't done that because they, they believe themselves to be in line for an OBE or an MBE. Uh, and I've seen the bad, you know, the pernicious effect this has on policy and uh, any sort of merit, meritocratic decision making to ever support the, the pyramid of privilege which the monarchy is. So that's really, that's my objection. Although I'm sure the, the king is a lovely bloke and you know, very nice to his grandchildren and everything. Not so nice to his children, but, but his grandchildren probably. And um, finally I've been handed a, a reason to watch, which is was the same reason I watched the queen coming up the Thames in her barge that everybody got absolutely drenched and it was quite funny. Sorry, it's just my sense of humour. <laughs> just, you know. Now, who are we going to stop nipping up the insides? You can't, at this junction, you can't stop people nipping up the outside at this junction. But everybody's in line at the moment, so nobody's trying it on. But you can stop them nipping up the outside when you get to the other side of the roundabout. That's your... That's your job. Here we go. And nobody's trying it on. Oh, that's really disappointing. I like getting in the way of people. So, uh, I might try and get a bit of flying in over the weekend, but as I say, the weather forecast is so terrible that neither Charles nor myself are going to have a very nice weekend by the look of it. It's tomorrow the coronation. And everyone, I think people are watching because of the pageantry, you know. Everyone I've talked, all the patients I've talked to uh, and said, you know, are, are you a big royalist? Are you going to watch the coronation? And they've all said, yeah, I will watch it because we do pageantry better than anybody else in the world. And uh, I think that is true, that is true. Although I've seen a brass band in full regalia march up and down the beach in Gambia at lunchtime with the feathers and the tassels and everything. And uh, that was pretty impressive. In the 40s it could be sun. <laughs> that was impressive. So, that, all these houses that you just went past on the left there, they're, they're going to build another 332 in that bit of land on the right there and, and this bit of land here. So I've had, I'm going to have literally nearly a thousand houses built around me in my surgery. I'll show you when we get into the car park. They are building more on the other side. I've happened to have just set up a surgery in the middle of the most massive conurbation with no services as such. A, a massive shopping center, but no no doctors, no, uh, this, this, I think this will probably will become the health center. I think the school will sell this and it will become the health center. But if you look through that green fencing to the left there, that's another bit of land which they're going to build the houses and apartments on. So, 
And here am I, look, right in the middle of it all. Stuck in the middle with you. Anyway, a bit of a ramble about free cycling and the monarchy there. It's Friday today, good isn't it? I'll um, talk to you soon, bye.